Okay, so in this particular chapter, we'll talk about the internal TCP load balancing. So in our previous chapter, we had talked about the internal HTTP load balancer. So you can see that particular chapter over here. So this is basically going to be a two-part series. In this particular part, I'm going to create an internal load balancer. And in the second part, I'm going to create a private service connect to connect this particular load balancer to another VPC. So that is something that we'll see in the upcoming chapter. So in this chapter, what we'll do is we'll create an internal load balancer and we're going to connect it to backend services. And again, you can only connect to this particular service from the same virtual network and it has to belong to the same particular region. So we'll be creating it basically within US Central one. And one important thing to note is that you cannot terminate your SSL traffic within the internal load balancer. So that has to be done by you from at the backend service as well. So that is one thing that is not available. So your external load balancer does have SSL termination, but your internal TCP load balancer does not. So that's a very important point to understand. And apart from that, once again, it's a layer four load balancer. So you do have the access of uh, knowing the source IP address in the backend service as well. So that is one important thing you should know. So again, we'll start off by creating a backend service. So we're going to create an instance group and connect it to the backend service. And after that, we're going to create a load balancer. Again, it's going to be an internal load balancer. And then finally, we're going to create a VM, which is going to act as a client. And using the internal IP address of the load balancer, it's going to connect to the internal load balancer. So let's see how this works. So I'll see you in the console. So once again, I've created an instance group. Now this instance group is just serving an Apache web page. So after you've created this instance group, let's go back and let's create our internal load balancer. Let's go to load balancing. Let's create a load balancer and let's click on start. So it's going to be an internal TCP load balancer. Let's click on start configuration. And this is going to be again only between my VMs. So since it's an internal load balancer, it's not going to connect to the internet. So let's click on this. And you can see that the options disappear. So you only have the option of a single region only. So let's click on continue here. And let's give a name for our load balancer. Let's just call this as internal load balancer. And again, the region is basically the region which has your backend service. It's a new central one. Let's choose that. And the network as well. So it's basically within the default network. And let's choose the instance group as well. So you can see that the instance group appears here over here. So let's choose this. And again, let's choose the health check as well. So that's about it for your backend. Let's go to our front-end service again. And one more important thing to note is that there is no option of SSL over here, neither at the backend nor at the front-end. So here again, the only thing you need to give is the network, the subnet. Again, it's going to be the default subnet. And let's also give the port number. So the port number is port 80. So it's basically a web server, so it's going to connect using port 80 and that's the only thing and global access is something that we'll discuss in the upcoming chapter so go again all that i've done is i've entered the port number and the default subnet so again this is basically the us central one subnet and that's about it so let's click on done and let's create our internal load balance so let's click on create now like the previous chapter you can also create a dns now if you want to get more information on how you can do that you can again check my previous video the link to which i will send in the description below so let's wait for this particular load balancer to finish okay so load balancer is done let's open this particular load balancer and let's get the ip address so this is the ip address let's go and connected using our virtual machine. So let's go to our VM instances. And let's SSH into our VM instance that I've created. So let's create an instance before that. Let's click on create instance and we'll do two tests. We'll first create a VM instance that is not in US central one. And let's see what happens if you do that. So let's create a VM instance in US east one. And let's see if you're able to connect to that particular virtual machine or uh, to that particular load balancer. So again, let's create a E2 micro. Click on select and let's create this virtual machine. And similarly, let's create one in US Central one as well. So I've created two instances. One is in US East and the other one is in US Central. So let's log into this instance in US East and let's see if you're able to connect to that particular virtual machine. And let's do a curl. And this is the IP address of the load balancer. 
and you can see that it's not able to connect and similarly let's also do an ssh on our instance 2 which is a new central one so here one important thing to note is that the zone does not matter so you can be in any zone as long as you're in the same region it should work And again, let's do a curl over here. And you can see that the page is served. So this is an important point to understand. You can only connect to the internal load balancer from the same region. So I hope this was easy to understand. I will see you in the next.